Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from QuarterNights.com. Today's Wednesday, the 3rd of January 2018. If you don't know my work, I analyze the Quran on the basis of the Quran's internal textual evidence rather than the tenets of the so-called Islamic religion. I believe that the Quran is from God and re I reject the Islamic uh, religion or religions as later inventions. You may download my full work or my full translation and analysis of the Quran, which runs to 536,000 words free from Quranites.com. Now, one of my central theses in a nutshell is that the Quran contains a clear method for overthrowing tyrannies, which I call the God Protocol. And you may read about that to some extent there. What I'm doing in the current phase of my work on YouTube is outlining that tyranny. So if you've come to this because of the title and you don't know who I am or what I'm doing or what you're doing here, then hopefully now you do. Now, quickly before I get into today's subject, if I look as though I've, I'm getting over a heavy cold, that's because I'm getting over a, over a heavy cold, so I hope you'll bear with me. Now today what I want to look at is solipsism. Um, and I need to preface this with a, a trigger warning for... For those who are used to having their information sort of served up with um, perhaps more source, I'm about to describe things as they, well, I would claim as they actually are, uh, certainly as I see them. And um, if you're not in the market for that, then I suggest you change channels right now and just go and catch up with Safe TV or um, Snowflake the Unicorn or something like that. Because I'm talking to adults, this channel has a very high number of them. Uh, I'm not out to, you know, insult anybody just, you know, for the sake of it, but people are so touchy now that they are insulted whether you want to insult them or not. So if you want to find something else to do, please feel free to do that. Um, but I'm not going to be responding to, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Offended in the comments. So solipsism, what is solipsism and how does it relate to the tyranny, or what I call tyranny light, which is what we're sort of living through right now. Solipsism, the word is really based around the word sol, sun, and this is based on the uh, Copernican view of the creation in which the sun is at the centre of things. And solipsism means making oneself the centre of all things, being self-centred or selfish. So how is this a tyranny? You know, surely a certain amount of self-regard is, is necessary. And, and I agree, it is. But while food is necessary to the body for survival of the individual and sex is necessary for the continuation of the race, both natural and necessary drives can be perverted and made deviant. And that's what I'm talking about here with regard to the self. It's an exaggerated almost dis distended, disproportionate regard for the self, one which, like gluttony or lust, stroke fornication, stroke lasciviousness, has taken on a destructive, self-defeating quality, one which, in a word, has become fully, and this is an old word, sinful. So, like uh, gluttony or lasciviousness or fornication, solipsism occurs when a natural and necessary characteristic becomes a functional, or in fact, an object of worship. That is, of a disproportionate and God-negating love of oneself and one's place in the order of things. And that's what I'm talking about here. And I suppose in the old-fashioned um, list of the seven deadly sins, and there are several lists, but in, in the one, the most sort of popular one, what we're speaking about, what I'm speaking about here, relates to pride. However, solipsism is something distinct from pride, and it's an especially modern affliction. And its influence is carefully packaged and cleverly packaged and delivered into the mind uh, by both the modern mediums and modern messages. So one influence or one aspect of this is that it is entirely delusional. It's a stark type of delusion. And it's a type of delusion which you only really get in developed countries. And I'll give you an example of this briefly. I came across an article which <laughs> really kind of said it all, <coughs> excuse me, from The Guardian, which is perhaps one of the most deluded so-called newspapers that you can possibly read. Um, I think it was the 30th of December 2017. The country of Nepal um, 
being a quote, you know, sort of backward third world country, is still afflicted with this thing called reality. You see, they have this thing called reality, which we used to have in the West, and um, but they 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 they're not you know up to speed with all of the um, you know having to pretend things are other than that they actually are. So what Nepal has had to do is actually ban blind people, and these are from the West, people with no without functioning eyes, and also double amputees from climbing Mount Everest. You see, delusional Westerners keep trying to climb Mount Everest because they feel that they can, and they keep getting killed. You know, there's this thing called reality, uh, and <laughs> and Nepal doesn't want to the hassle, and uh, both on a practical sense and in a PR sense, it's it's you know it's bad for tourism if people keep getting killed there. Um, there was another case a couple of years ago of a German delusional millennial moron who threw herself into the, the cage with a polar bear. Because in her mind, in her in the world in which she's the centre of all things and everything is, kind of has to be the way that she wishes it to be, polar bears are friendly and cuddly. Well, polar bears didn't get the memo on this, and I, I think she was killed. Um, she was certainly very badly injured. And um, anyway... I hope she wasn't killed and that she did get, a, you know, that that served to give her a dose of, of reality. And it's reality, you see, is, is really the en enemy of um, of this solipsistic mindset. And when you start pointing out reality to people, as I'm sure we've all seen now, we're living in this inclusivistic Western society, you're just attacked for being hateful. It's not that you're, you know, dealing with reality. You're just, you're just a bad person. Now... I've experienced, this is purely anecdotal, but I, I've experienced the difference, and this is perhaps why it's so starkly clear to me. Um, I went to live in Russia in the early 90s, and this was a country that was just coming out pretty much from the Second World War, I mean, technologically, and, and in quite a lot of other ways, um, coming into so-called modernity, or modern post-modernity. And um, so... Me, coming from, you know, this rather sort of fluffy, uh, distracted, so very subjective Western background into Russia where, you know, if you fall over, <laughs> you're just going to get ground into the tarmac and, you know, nobody's going to notice. Uh, it was a rude, awake a rude awakening and it did me a load of good. I can't tell you how grateful I am in retrospect to Russia for this for this experience. In Russia at that time, it was starkly the case that men were men and women were women. You know, grandmothers, babushki, they they wanted to look after their grandchildren. Now this was this was news to me because coming from the West, most of the grandmothers I knew um, were trying to discover they're in a unicorn and getting their, getting a new <laughs> set of body piercings and signing up to go skydiving. So, whereas R Russian, you know, just put it in simple terms, grandmothers, they wanted to do grandmother sort of stuff because they were grounded in this thing called practical reality. Now, Am I saying that it's wrong to try new things? No, I'm not saying it's wrong to try things, new things. Of course not. But the infantile component of solipsism is hard to miss. In fact, infantilism and solipsism go together. Why? Because selfishness doesn't have any self-control or discipline. While it may have big dreams and limitless imagination, it can rarely deliver. It needs the grown-ups to hold the bar down for it so that it can get over. And if that doesn't happen and the going gets truly rough and tough, it starts crying. And this is what we see in, in this inclusivistic society where we have to pretend that people who are absolutely useless at things are great at these things. Um, anyway, I'll get into some of this more as I go through, but... Really, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to sort of touch on is why this is part of of a tyranny. It doesn't seem like it, does it? It's, I mean, obviously, if you still have a functioning brain after the the mind job that's been done on us all over the last 20, 30, 40 years, um, congratulations. Um, and it, you know, obviously, you you understand what I'm talking about. But it isn't a natural thing to see this as 
tyranny, and I understand that. But I'm going to touch on why it is and how it fits into the broader picture below. So as, as we've sort of established, solipsism is a crucial element of the snowflake culture, entitlement culture, victimhood culture, liberalism stroke cultural Marxism in general. <clears throat> now, we have to understand where the elite, because in my worldview, we're ruled. You see, you're not going to hear me, you know, waxing lyrical about democracy and how we should all vote so and so in and out. I don't believe in any of that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the, the masses are herd and we, the herd, are managed pretty much by those who have all the power. I don't see this as a fundamentally bad thing, um, but I, I, I do see this as the reality. Uh, if you want to talk about democracy and who you should vote for and so on, save it for somebody who's interested. For me, democracy and, and this charade, it's a, it's a nice bedtime story for the for the slaves on the tax farm, but it isn't anything that grown-ups believe. If you believe it, you know, you're welcome to it, but I don't. I regard the, the masses as ruled. I think they've always been ruled. If you go back to the Caesars and so on, all that's happened is we have layers of duplicity now um, you know, in between us and, and the ruling elite. So this ruling elite, um, in my opinion, are Satanists. They fundamentally worship the self and they've passed their doctrines down to the profane in crude formats so that what top masons and i'm not talking about your uncle jim who's you know who's a you know a, a, a master mason at the local lodge i'm talking about top masons here okay 32nd degree 33rd degree and would you believe it above what these people believe and what they what they worship consciously they've passed down to the unwashed masses and the unwashed masses, the profane as they would regard us, uh, worship the same thing, but, they, but we supposedly do so uh, unconsciously. If you just remember, and I think most people have heard this by now, uh, the Satanist, the famous Satanist, Alistair Crowley, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. So that would be, you know, some part of um, a more erudite um, example of this type of myth, of this type of mythos. But what about Nike? Just do it. Now that's that's an example of what I'm talking about. This is a, a dumbing down. I, I have a public relations background. You know, I kind of noticed these things. So just do it. it, it it's, it's do what thou wilt. You know, just do it. Just do what? Just do, just do whatever you want. Okay, this is just one example which we've all seen we all know it's embedded into our nervous system even that <clears throat> even when you see the nike symbol now that's that symbol that sort of rounded tick is so connected in our minds with this logo with this slogan rather that when you see one they're interchangeable just do it and it, this, this, uh, this is just one example. I don't have time. And I'm not going to go through hundreds of hundreds of examples. I'm sure you can think of more. But <clears throat> this is so ingrained in our culture now that to speak against this doctrine is almost heresy. For example, you'll hear people say well, this all the time: "Live your passion, i.e., do what you feel like doing." Now, to speak against that, to speak against living your passion, people don't define what they mean by any of this. But this is. You're supposed to go along with this. Believe in yourself. This is another one you hear ad nauseum. Live your dream. Uh, oh, and if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. Yeah, these things. Yeah. These are just small examples of this type of lazy, solipsistic sort of snow snowboarder through life mentality that, that you we get all the time. And it's in everything. The reality is that um, much more is achieved in, in, in life by fixity of purpose, dedication, habit, hard work, you know, those sorts of things, than all the passion in the world. I mean, you know, if you take, for example, let's take Beethoven. Oh, he was a genius. He was, yeah, he was a genius. He was at his desk, desk at eight o'clock every morning working. Um, if you take some of the expressions which we used to have, manners maketh man. Manners is just an old word for habits. It's your habits that make you. But a solipsist isn't interested in that. It sounds too much like hard work. 
Also, solipsist has watched an awful lot of television and films. And a film is, is life. It's a, it's, a, it's a poet's representation of life. I'll get into poets later on um, in the Quranic sense, with all of the boring bits taken out. So ultimately, they think life is going to be very easy. There's no, there's no, there's no waiting. There's no having to do it. I mean, if you're watching a film with the, whoever the, the star is, he wants to get good at, you know, skill X. I mean, it takes him all of three seconds, three screen seconds, and he can do it. And this is how solipsistic, solipsistic people think that the world works. But actually what this is, is a dumbed down form of mystery school hermeticism for, for the masses. And it's a way of keeping us in check. And I'll, I'll get into why and how that works in a minute. <clears throat> now, again, sort of from my own personal experience, when I first lived in Russia in the early 90s, all of this was conspicuous by its absence. And as Western companies came to Russia, they had to re-educate, almost in the communistic sense, Russian women um, to be as self-obsessed as Western women. Oh, they've succeeded, you know, fantastically. It didn't take very long, but it, it was it was an interesting process. I'll just give you a little insight into this. The company L'Oreal, makeup, stuff like that. Now, in the West, the the slogan for L'Oreal, I don't know what it is now, but it certainly was, because I'm worth it. And I've got this from the L'Oreal Paris USA website. I'm just going to read you the following quote. Because I'm worth it. These four words are bound to the time of their creation, and yet they have proven to be timeless. They have become what the brand stands for. Written in 1973, when a social revolution and a new spirit of feminism was in full swing. It seems clear that the phrase could only have been written by a woman. End quote. Now, when a Russian woman in the 1990s saw that, because it's called localization, I, I also happen to have a background in that, so it's related to marketing, public relations, stuff like this. What you do is you're not just translating words, uh, you, you have to um, translate a sense from one culture into another. Before I get into the L'Oreal one, I'll give you the famous case of the, uh, this was in, um, I think it was a paracetamol company, uh, headache tablet, something like that. And um, they went, it moved into an, into the Arab market. It was a fantastic brand, apparently. They sold loads. And, and all across, you know, France, England, wherever they have, you know, there's the, there's the problem, reaction, solution. So, you know, the lady, she's got the terrible headache, she, she takes the pill, and now she feels great. <clears throat> doesn't require any, uh, doesn't require any, any words. <laughs> so they roll this out across the Arab world, and nobody's buying. And they can't work out what's the wrong, what's wrong with this. And they realize, well, people read Arabic from right to left. So they're looking at the billboard and they're saying, somebody feels great, they take a tablet and now they've got a headache. That's why it wasn't selling. This is the difference between translation and localization. So when you're localizing something, they, they needed to try to localize the because I'm worth it concept to Russian women who had come through, you know, what I would call a sort of a reality-based society. I'm not saying it was good or bad. I'm just saying that it was not delusional in the sense that Western women now, you know, generally speaking are. Russian women couldn't understand the the concept. They look at this woman, this supermodel, telling them that she's worth it. And they just thought she was boasting. They didn't understand that they were supposed to identify with her. Why? Because their life was completely different. I thought that was very interesting. Not the same now, though. 20, 30 years, they're all pretty much conditioned. Now, it doesn't take long to, to re, reposition the herd. So solipsism then in Russia wasn't a thing, um, but, but it was going to become one. And what happened there was exactly what I'd already seen in the UK. Because, you know, if you understand, I, I, I started living in Russia about 1990, 1991. And this was a, a, an entire society that had failed so for me, for example, it's not difficult to imagine the collapse of everything that we have now because I've already lived through an entire collapse and I've also lived through a couple of economic collapses. So these aren't complicated things for me to get my head around. I've already seen it. Um, but 
I thought, somewhat naively, oh, I was a young man, do you know, what are you going to do? That, that Russia might adopt some of the better things of the West. Um, was, ever, was, was anyone ever, so young, ever that young? But they didn't, no, they didn't. What they did was they just imported wholesale uh, all of the utter filth that we've got in the West as an agenda. And that's why I realised this is a menu. It doesn't matter, you know, freedom, you can call it what you like. It's basically an agenda. So in it all came sexual license, Eastern religions, feminism, lesbianism, sodomy, you know, chakras, um, the whole thing. And as a part of that, we had whole armies of writers and speakers who translated and un you know, translated or basically you know, rehashed people like Tony Robbins and the concept of the secret into Russian. And within a few years, you had a nation of people who all had multiple past lives, meditated on their chakras, felt entitled to basically anything they could imagine and regarded sex as a pastime as significant as drinking tea. How quickly this happened. And I lived through this. Just throw a bit of money at people, give them a bit more, you know, a lot of, a lot of entertainment, debase them through their, through their, you know, through their appetites. And it, 10, 15 years, done. So in short, society had become like the West, effectively sociopathic. Now, this self-worship, which this solipsism, which I'm talking about, is fundamentally unsatisfying um, because it's false. Man is built, he's meant to make efforts while keeping God as the object of worship. Deep down, I would argue, we're, we know we're not meant to worship ourselves. It's a deviation. And deviants of all kinds feel that something is wrong. When it is wrong, in this case, it is wrong. So if you're a glutton or a drug addict or a sodomite or a self-worshipper, somewhere in your soul, you kind of know that you're not right with God. And a healthy society will tell you that. It will give you realistic feedback. But a sick society will pander to your delusions Delusions which will take you to hell. Now, the argument today, of course, is telling obese, you know, objectively obese people that they are overweight or sodomites that they are deviant is somehow cruel. We just need to adjust our perspective and everything will be all right. That is, we're supposed to collude with delusion and, and deviance, i.e. refrain from giving the person so afflicted the very feedback that they actually need. And... As a slight aside, this is part of what the Qur'an does require of believers. We're supposed to call to the good and discourage the bad. We're not here to force anything on anyone, but we are supposed to stand up and speak out for what is right. However, this enforced delusion that I'm talking about, which is almost like a sort of um, a, a communalistic form of solipsism, imposes a pressure on the society. It impacts the non-deviants who have to pretend to believe something that their good sense tells them is not so until they finally believe it and become mentally deviant themselves. Um, but it also puts pressure on the deviant. And this is how it is with out-of-control women. As you may have noticed, we have not a few in, in the West now. And What's actually happened is that these, you know, these poor creatures have lost the leadership that they used to get in the home, um, and what they need is a strong, decent man who will not put up with histrionics. That's what they actually need. You know, I'm talking about a kind, decent, strong guy who's, you know, perhaps got some of the, the range of his hearing <laughs> tactfully blocked out, but isn't going to put up with this, and you know, he can keep things, you know. On, on on track this is their only genuine pathway out of neurosis okay but what's happened is that all the strong men or not all the strong men but you know a hell of a lot of them have been reframed into simpering beta males whose only hope of procreation lies in colluding with said out of control women and taking or at least pretending to take their psychosis seriously and in such a case, such women have no genuine exit pathway from their madness. 
Now, this is just one example. You can you, you can extrapolate from this onto the whole what they're doing with uh, gender roles and feminism, all of this, and it, it is insanity. You know, you you know that it is, and and obviously <laughs> it is, and it's meant to be. This is what I'm trying to get through. You know, the point that I'm trying to get to in this series of talks that it, this is a a very well thought out tyrannical system, and this particular fracturing of or the sort of keeping oneself separated from reality in a solipsistic um, delusional state has a fracturing impact upon the individual because he feels atomized and unconnected which he is and upon the society which is also atomized and individualized and it's a form of protracted it's in a form of protracted psychological pain or shock one that you can't really put a name to and if it's born for long enough, it can actually lead to a fracturing within the psyche. And I believe that this is why they're doing it. And this is how individual psyches are split using shock. This is well known. Look up M MK Ultra and things like this. But this is being happened. This is going out on a on a sort of industrial scale. And what can happen is that new alters are created within the personality, leading to disassociated characters living within the one person. Basically, you end up with a, far, a mild form of multiple personality disorder. And in my opinion, this is what's happening now, both on a, a personal and a societal level. And that this is necessary to the rulers. Because this way, you, 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 won't, you won't see the obvious contradictions in the society. And think of doublethink. This is what has, has to happen. I keep hitting the mic. This is what has to happen with doublethink in 1984. And if you haven't, if you haven't read 1984, I mean, there's a very good film with, with uh, Richard Burton and John Hurt, but it isn't the book. You do really need to read the book. Um, the ability to think two contradictory things at the same time. This becomes much easier, in fact it becomes necessary, when your psyche has been sufficiently fractured not to notice. And if you do notice, if, if part of you does notice it, there'll be another part of you which that part is completely unaware of that doesn't notice it. So, in my opinion, this solipsism that I'm talking about, this this intense selfishness, is a, a and, and delusion and choosing one's own reality over objective reality is a almost a prerequisite for tyranny light, i.e. a human tax farm where they're pushing you know vaccines, mind control, education, entertainment, etc. Since overthrowing a tyranny <clears throat> requires service and sacrifice, but if yourself your individual self is your God, real service and sacrifice are not possible since the object of the service and sacrifice is the self. Under this system, service, in inverted commas, and sacrifice, in inverted commas, are merely forms of self-service, i.e. vanity. And once real service is called for and it ceases being fun, all striving simply stops. So even in mere political terms, leaving aside, you know, my broader sort of Quranic vision, just, just you know, purely in political terms. Not, no actual change is possible under solipsism. Once the people are solipsistic, change, anything which requires dedication, any kind of dedication greater than a, a, a few clicks on a mouse, becomes impossible because it's not fun anymore. While at the same time, these slaves on the tax farm believe they're free. This is genius this is absolutely brilliant and this is how it works now moving on to the quran uh, you may be watching this you may know what my work is on the quran you may not know you may you may not care but bear with me because i'm going to give you a couple of verses uh, from the quran which relate in, in some way to what i'm talking about now the quran happens to say that the majority of men worship jinn and you can get into the question what jinn are or are not in a, another place. Uh, I'm not going to discuss that here, but suffice it to say these are uh, entities which are we don't see. Now, if this is true, that the majority of men worship jinn, and if it is applicable, that means that those who worship themselves 
which is what solipsism is, are essentially worshipping a demonic entity, which they are conflating with their own soul. Thus, taking one's own desires and perceptions as the guiding doctrine of one's life is not merely selfishness, it's idolatry. Now, here are a couple of... <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to have to drink some water. Here are a couple of verses which relate to, to what I'm talking about. The first we find at uh, Surah or chapter 26, 221 through 227. Shall I inform you upon whom the shaitans, the satans, descend? They descend upon every false deceiver. They give ear, but most of them are liars. And the poets, the misguided, follow them. Now, as a quick aside, I mean, the modern equivalent of poets are who? Filmmakers, musicians, the people who create with the muses, the people who create entertainment. But the poets, the misguided, follow them. Hast thou not considered how they wander in every valley? I, how they they're just wandering. They, they, they're just wandering, lost, and that they say what they do not. Save those who heed warning and do deeds of righteousness and remember God much, and help themselves after they have been wronged. And those who do wrong will come to know to what place of return they will be returned. So I'll read that again. And those who do wrong, i.e., those who follow the poets and do wrong, doesn't matter what the reason is, will come to know to what place of return they will be returned. There are going to be consequences. So it's not just a matter of, oops, I followed the wrong thing, and there's no, there are no consequences. There are consequences. So that's 26, 21 through, uh, 221 through 227. And now I'm going to read 23, this is Surah 23, uh, verse 71. And this really relates to solipsism. Because you do hear this a lot. A lot of people think that they can create their own reality in their own mind. Quote, And had the truth followed their vain desires, the heavens and the earth and whoso is therein would have been corrupted. So, here we know that the heavens and the earth don't follow our vain desires. Because, the, you know, the laws of physics don't change. They stay fixed, right? To continue, the truth is, we have brought them their remembrance. I mean, we've brought the people a story about them. To continue, and they are disinclined towards their remembrance i.e. they don't want to hear about it. That's really it. I hope those thoughts about solipsism are of, quite, are of some interest. And um, I know it's quite a hard one to get because it doesn't seem tyrannical. This new tyranny doesn't. It doesn't have a gun in your face. <sighs> but it, it doesn't need one. <laughs> and... Um, what they're doing is they're creating a breed, uh, because if you think if you think that genetics went away, eugenics went away, it, it didn't. It's in our food. It's in everything. They're they're breeding, in my opinion, the the rulers are breeding a herd that is docile and malleable, and that you can fleece. And that will go quietly into the slaughterhouse. That's what they want. That's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran free using the button in the top right hand corner. Or buy the hard copy there at 10% less than on Amazon. I also encourage you to sign up for the Quranite Plus newsletter on the site to get occasional micro updates. You can download the audio from my YouTube videos to your mobile device using the links in the drop down below. I recommend meetquranites.com to connect with other Quran alone believers. Like if you like, comment if you have something constructive to say, and subscribe to get more each week. 
and use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short. Eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds.